Um, kia ora koutou. my name is Vanessa Kurudangi. Um, I'm supposed to be talking a little bit about how um, the TPPA is going to affect our future generations. <clears throat> um, my korero is not going to be about throwing facts and figures and statistics at you because our children are our taonga and they deserve to be treated as such. Therefore, I can't reduce them to numbers and graphs, um, risk factors and diagrams, because they're so, so, so much more than that. And I know that if we don't start making drastic change right now, like we're doing today, that they are going to be the generation that has to clean up this mess. So just a, a few words about myself, <clears throat> hoping that I can make a connection with you, that we might have something in common. This is just a tiny bit of who I am. Mother, teacher, Māori and other. Sister, aunt, poet, lover. Mischief maker, pot plant killer. <laughs> Pippi hunter, soil tiller. Rainbow chaser with star-filled dreams. Singer of lullabies, just one of the two. Trying to live on this earth unharmed, immune to the government's bribes and fake charms. So I know that people have a lot to say about what they're against, what they resist, what they oppose, what they say no to. So I need to ask you, what do you stand for? What do you encourage? What do you promote, agree with, approve of? These are the conversations that we need to be having with our children. Caught it all framed in positive ways in which we tell our children yes. But let me tell you, this week, my um, newsfeed in Facebook, my social media newsfeed, has been flooded with um, Three things, mostly. One, information about the TPPA. Two, te matatini. So I have to shout out. And three, oh, that the thing that has been blowing up all over my newsfeed has been, what colour is that damn dress? Somehow along the line, those things got a little bit cross-pollinated. And so I started um, likening the dress to the TPPA. And unlike me trying to fit into the dress, it wasn't such a stretch. <clears throat> you see, the dress became heavily debated. The dress proved how easily distracted people can become. For further distractions, also New see New Zealand flag debate. Whilst reading feedback about the dress, is it white and gold? Is it black and blue? A thought occurred to me that the dress is like the TP that the dress like the TPPA engages vastly different people from all walks of life who have a view to share and that these viewpoints vary considerably. The positive yes moment about the dress clogging up my newsfeed is that I know now without a doubt that people will engage if they feel that their opinion counts for something. If they believe that someone is listening, what they say matters, that they matter. And it's up to us to talk to our children and for our children, because they matter. And when it comes to opposing the TPPA, we need to engage people like this, because it is a colourblind thing. It doesn't matter what colour you are, we will all be affected. So we all need to have a voice. What do I think about the dress? Well, I can't garden in that dress. So I have to stand on the side of Papatuanuku. I can't swim and dive and fish in that dress. So I have to stand on the side of my moana. I can't breathe in that dress. So I have to stand for clean air so I can inhale and exhale without fear that something's going to happen to me. Just like the TPP, no amount of trying to change or reshape myself will ever get me to fit into it. I'll never be comfortable, so I just won't wear it. Yeah. 
just to finish, I've got a, a wee poem about growing up local. Um, and it's to do with what I dream for for my son, for your sons and daughters. Um, and it's about moving forward by looking at the past. It goes just a little like this. I'll lay with you, a little child, my little child. Oh, sorry. I'll lay with you a little while, sweet child of mine, sweet child, and tell you funny stories of a girl who grew up wild. She romped amongst the Madakai, once bustling, now long gone. Her feet were bare, and with tangled hair, she sang her favourite songs. The old people who gathered there grew more than fruit and kai, and she listened to the corridor and learned about the sky. She daydreamed in the Kumara patch. She played and laughed and wept. She skipped around the manuka trees, where as a babe she slept. The queer would come and sit a while, the kete on their backs, laden full of watercress from further down the tracks. The river always beckoned her. The banks were tempting near, whispering, I am your provider. Take what you will, my dear. She danced across the mud flats. An early morning's hour, her tupuna seemed to call to her, Nga papa ko oranga taura. Yeah. <laughs> And when she saw her moa and felt the ocean spray, this wild girl thought her heart would burst, was never a better day. With sand between her freedom feet, for pippy she would dig, on June she hoped would never shift when wild girl had grown big. Komatua nodded when they felt the breeze blow quiet and mild, and they saw her eyes closed, listening for a karanga to wild child. Where is she now, I hear you ask, sweet child of mine, sweet child. Why, she is now your mother, my little boy, grown wild. Thank you.